last time we talked to you guys, we were in Sugar Eat Canyon in New Mexico. And after that, we traveled north into Colorado and we camped at the base of Sierra Blanca right next to Great Sand Dunes National Park. Sierra Blanca is one of the 14,000 foot mountains here in Colorado. Sierra Blanca, also known as Sacred White Shell Mountain, I believe, by the Native Americans. It was so beautiful, so out there, and we really loved it. But Great Sand Dunes National Park was incredible. So we are here. We are at Great Sand Dunes National Park. And we're gonna go climb a dune. That is almost 700 feet tall. We hiked all the way to the top and it was really hard. It was one of those like two steps forward, one step back type of thing with all the sand. But we made it to the top and it was so worth the hard hike. Great sand dunes are the greatest sand dunes in this country. The uh, sand dune that we hiked was 700 feet tall and it is the tallest sand dunes in the United States. We had to stop quite a few times to empty our boots of sand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that everybody was coming to. And we could and see why, all the others are really hard to get to. So we learned that these sand dunes are here because all the rivers and the streams that come out of the mountains pull all the sand down into the valley and there's a whole bunch of prevailing north, uh, northwestern, northeasterly winds that push all the sand to this one corner of the valley. It's also really interesting that there's a couple rivers that come down from the mountains right back here and this, the water disappears at the base of these sand dunes. It brings all the sand, sand down and disappears. And occasionally the water will reappear on the other side of the sand dunes. Uh, this year, however, there has been a drought and there is no water on the other side. On that hike, we also ran into John Hebert of Hebert's Travels, which was pretty neat. He was on his way up when we were on our way down. I think he saw us panting and was probably like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> we spent a few more days up there getting some work done, and then we headed down to Colorado Springs and the Denver area. We are up now in the Pike National Forest. We drove up here and found ourselves a beautiful campground, although the road up was a little challenging. Yeah, really windy, curvy roads, really steep, which, you know, we're in the mountains. We came up here to the Denver area so that we could meet my sister and her boyfriend who flew in for the week and while they were here we went on a ton of awesome adventures starting with Garden of the Gods down in Colorado Springs. Yeah day one Garden of the Gods first which was amazing red rock formations that just stick right out of the earth and they're pretty much right downtown almost just just outside of town, which is really cool, and really the, accessible to everybody. Yeah, and the park is free. Um, it was a little busy, but it's still worth it, and it's so beautiful. After that, we headed up and checked out the Manitou Cliff Dwellings, which are some of the best preserved Native American cliff dwellings that were preserved in that area. I think they've rebuilt them a little bit, but they allow you to walk through them and really see how the Native Americans lived in these cliffs. It was incredible. We learned so much as well. So while we've been here in Colorado, it has been periodically thunderstorming pretty much every day. And while we were at the Manitou Cliff Dwellings, it started to rain and it was really cool because we just took shelter in the cliffs and we were like, oh yeah, this does really work. Another adventure we did was we drove the backwoods way out from our campground up through the mountains, which was beautiful in its own right. Along the Platte River. And went up to visit Pikes Peak, which uh, you can, you could until this year take a cog train to the top or drive. We're driving the Pikes Peak Highway today. We're going up to Pikes Peak, which is over 14,000 feet. And that's it, right up there. Well, this is the Crystal River, Crystal Reservoir, and uh, it's a water supply for Colorado Springs, and it's super clear, beautiful water. Yep, and we drove all the way to the top. There are a couple of places where you can stop and take a shuttle to the summit, uh, but we drove all the way. And yeah, I think it's 14,100 and some feet or whatnot, and it was the most terrifying drive I have ever done. We've done a lot of cliffside drives, but no trees, no guardrails. You just feel like you're driving off into infinity a lot of times. Yeah. Oh, but it was worth it.
out the front of our truck window. Oh, it just doesn't even look right. <laughs> yeah, we got to the top and it was it was like a partly cloudy day, so we could see a whole bunch of stuff, but we also had this huge cloud like coming up the mountain and we were so we were in the clouds, but we could still see it. It was just an awesome experience, awesome view. Car ride? A truck ride? After Pikes Peak, we visited Seven Falls, which is a privately owned canyon in Colorado Springs that has seven waterfalls that you can hike. They've built a crazy awesome stairway up the falls so that you can head up and get to the top, which is challenging sometimes when you're climbing waterfalls. Yeah, what was it, like 244 steps up to the top of the falls? And this place is beautifully manicured and there's a restaurant there. A little bit more developed than what we typically do, but once you got to the top, you could hit some of the hiking trails and the canyon itself was beautiful to hike around. It was definitely spectacular. Spoiler alert though, they do pump the water back up the falls <laughs> to give it a little more flow because this time of year, there's not a lot of water Yeah, flowing. we were really worried that it was going to saw the creek it was just trickling yeah we were a little worried that the falls weren't going to be as magnificent as they're supposed to be but they make them magnificent all the time <laughs> one day while they're here we just uh, did some exploring around the area that we're camped at we are up here in the pike national forest as we said along the rampart range which is a whole bunch of atv uh, and trails and such but they have a whole bunch of hiking there as well and one day we decided to go investigate a place called devil's head Devil's Head Lookout is like the number one hike in the Sedalia area, which is southwest of Denver. And we thought it'd be cool. We heard that there was a fire lookout up there and a guy that uh, mans that station still. And we'll tell you all about the instrumentation he has there. And uh, so we decided to do that hike. It was a gorgeous hike. We started out with fantastic weather. But as we started to climb the mountain, the clouds started to roll in. Yeah. By the time we got to the top of the mountain, it was, we were in the clouds. We were, we were expecting a beautiful view. We were in the clouds. And we decided anyway that we were gonna go try to actually see this fire tower, which is stairs up this windy, windy stairs up to the top of this rock where they got this little fire tower perched and strapped down with cables. But as we were climbing those stairs, we started to hear thunder. Yeah, and uh, me, my, uh, my sister, Nick, and I all turned back around, but Tom braved it to the top, which is very uncharacteristic of Tom because he hates heights. And this was not a very cool staircase. <laughs> no. When I got to the top, though, it was awesome. I did get to see that fire lookout, but when I was up there, a storm cloud, a thunder cloud started to roll in and the lightning rod that they had on the top started crackling and you could feel the static electricity coming off, which is maybe imminent of a strike. What, <laughs> what's happening is that the ground is releasing all the static electricity or the, the cloud is just charging to the ground in static electricity form instead of a big bolt. And the lightning rod at the top of that tower was doing its job and it was discharging the cloud. And that's how lightning rods are supposed to work, actually. They are not there intended to take a strike, although if the charge overwhelms them, they will take the strike and they're grounded. But what they're there to do is to discharge the cloud and actually prevent a strike. Well, anyway, long story short, we started back down the mountain after, you know, feeling the static charge in the metal staircase. We were, we were thoroughly freaked out by that and we decided it was time to go so we started making our way down the mountain and it like feels like it's starting to rain a little bit and then all of a sudden we see this little piece of hail i was like hey guys check it out there's hail we first took shelter from that little hail thinking oh you know glad it's passed okay, so we're sheltering because there's some pretty big chunks of hail they're coming down like crazy and we started hiking down the mountain again and all of a sudden, thud, thud, thud. Yep, Cover yep, your yep, head. Yep, 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 Cover yep. your head. Oh, my God. oh they're huge. Okay. This ain't, oh, gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, my this God. is so bad. Oh. oh. Golf balls were coming out of the sky. So luckily we had an umbrella with us and we found a semi-decent tree 
put up the umbrella and all four of us huddled underneath this umbrella for, I don't know, it was probably about 15, 20 minutes for this hailstorm. Wait, wait, this is us hiding, <laughs> hiding from a hailstorm. I'm so glad we remembered the umbrella. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. And it rained hail all over the place. The ground was white. It was ridiculous. It's one thing to be in a hailstorm when you can take shelter in a hard surface, but we had nowhere to go. And we were, we were luckily we got under the branches and the trees were breaking most of the fall of the hail, but it was terrifying. The hail was giant. We did end up with a few dents on our truck, but yeah. That's how life goes sometimes. In hindsight, it's kind of a cool story. We took a day to explore the city of Denver and have lunch in town and explore the streets of the downtown area, which was pretty cool. We had a wonderful lunch at this cafe called City O City. It is a vegan restaurant where you could pretty much get anything on the menu vegan, which, which is, is exciting for us. Yeah, because I don't know if we've told you guys, but we've actually eaten a plant, 100% plant-based diet for almost a year now. Uh, we've been vegetarians considerably longer than that, but uh, being able to go to a restaurant, we could order anything off the menu. Yeah was awesome. A friend of my sister showed us around downtown. We stopped at a beer garden. Uh, we walked down this alley full of cats. If you haven't been to the cat alley in Denver, it is pretty cool. Check it out. We also took a day to explore Rocky Mountain National Park and we love national parks and this was no exception. It was beautiful. Although when we first got there, it was packed. So apparently Rocky Mountain National Park is Kind of popular. It was so busy and we'd heard great things about the Bear Lake area um, and m many other people have heard of that, those things as well and we actually had to wait in line for quite a while to get on a shuttle to get to the trailhead uh, where it was also very busy but it was definitely worth it. We hiked up to Emerald Lake and Dream Lake and they are as beautiful as their names suggest. We continued through the park on the Trail Ridge Road, which is a spectacular drive up to the high elevation tundra. And it winds around, we saw all kinds of elk and the views are just stunning. White capped mountains everywhere you look. It and the tundra right now in the summer, the flowers are everywhere and it's just incredible. It's a completely different world up there. We were just awestruck. Lastly, we wrapped up their visit with a little more relaxing day. We headed to Idaho Springs, Colorado, where we first went to the Indian Hot Springs. Yes, this place was extremely relaxing. They have these private jacuzzis that they pump full of mineral water out of the ground, natural. and uh, Naturally heated too. Yeah, and it was very, very nice. It was like the perfect hot tub. <laughs> we wrapped up their visit with dinner in Idaho Springs at this amazing restaurant called The Buffalo, which is attached to the Westbound and Down Brewery. They have an amazing menu, amazing chef, amazing bartender. It was just all around amazing. We had a wonderful, wonderful meal there. Overall, we've been really enjoying Colorado so far, although getting around the mountains is a bit challenging. Finding camping in the summer is a bit challenging, but we've been really enjoying it. We didn't just play though. We got some work done. We did get a couple videos out. First of all, we got our Truma overview and review video out. Check that out if you haven't. And I also got up a video about uh, the shock replacement that we did last winter, actually. Yeah, we got quite a few comments on that one about like, where are you guys and why is Tom's beard so long? But that was one that we had shot quite a while ago. So finally, I want to give a shout out to my hometown of Houghton, Michigan in the Upper Peninsula. Last weekend, they experienced some very strange weather where a ton of rain was dropped in a very short amount of time. This caused all kinds of problems.
problems, including washed out roads, um, creeks washing out entire sections of roads, stranding people, um, mudslides, and houses shifting on their foundations. I believe at least one person died. Uh, so I just wanted to let you guys know that we're thinking about you. While this event is still very fresh, we will leave a link in the description below for you guys to learn more and find out ways that you can help if you so choose. So we're packing up from our spot that we're at right now and headed to meet up with the rest of the cast and crew to finish filming the movie in the next couple weeks. Yep, so we will chat with you guys in a few more weeks with some more updates and until then we'll try to get a few more videos out to you. As always, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We love having you along for our journey and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.